Hey all, here are OS Reviews. You're watching our hands-on review of the Akinori Dashcam Angel. This has one of the most distinctive and unusual shapes I've seen for a car dashboard camera. And that's because the manufacturer claims that this particular shape eliminates any reflections. A typical dashcam that looks like this when applied onto a glass windshield, the glass itself often produces reflections of light that hits back into the lens and creates glare, especially when you're filming things at night and you have a light that's on inside of your car. So they claim that this particular triangle design with the camera lens, which is going to be pointed parallel to the glass, is going to create the most clean image. Here's a quick snapshot of what the camera lens looks like once it's mounted onto the glass, as you can see there directly, so no glare or reflections. And it also has a built-in GPS sensor. There's a small backup battery inside, and there's also a three axis accelerometer that can detect collisions. This product is interesting because it was actually released in 2016, or at least initially prototyped on some crowd sourcing campaigns, but it's taken a little longer for it to actually hit the market. So now in 2019, we're taking a look at it. The packaging contents include a full SD card reader. There's a USB-based charger that you can use to power up the dashboard camera. It's actually in the same shape as the dash cam itself, which is this triangle. And then underneath, we have the accessories, inclusive of the mount, which uh, you can pop onto the car's uh, windshield, and it's actually removable. So this uh, attaches into the camera like this, and you can detach it easily as well. There's also a cleaning wipe that you can use to remove any dust or lint before attaching it onto the car's glass. We also have a quick user manual. Finally, the last compartment includes the cables. There's even a second cable which you can wire yourself directly into the car's battery uh, if you don't want to rely on the external plug, which is a nice touch. Now, it does take a mini USB plug in terms of power on the dash cam, so that's two generations out of date. Uh, the latest standard these days is USB Type-C, the older one was a micro USB, and then before that was this mini USB. So it's not too big of a deal, I suppose, on something like this, which will be plugged in pretty much at all times. But again, I would like to see USB Type-C moving forward. Now, before we take a closer look at the design of the camera, just want to re-emphasize some of its main selling points and features. Again, discrete mounting. It has a Sony powered lens, and it also has a enhanced night vision mode, which uh, claims to uh, include a triple core CPU inside it's called the dark room technology that enhances the visibility of nighttime shots. One of the surprising things is the price is also not too prohibitive. In fact, it goes on sale for as low as $70, which is actually cheaper than many of the other brand name dashboard cams we've checked out, such as the 70 Mai from Xiaomi. So it actually does deliver again a original design at an affordable price. Otherwise, on the very top here, we have the company's logo. We have a very interesting texture going on. There's a dedicated power key. And then on the side here, there's a flap that covers up the micro SD card slot. And yes, you do get a free micro SD card in the box. I have one here that's 16 gigabytes. There's even a micro HDMI port built on in, which is pretty handy if you want to directly plug this to an HDTV and view back the contents. There's the power port, mini USB. If we flip it over, that's actually where the lens is located. And again, this is basically how it attaches onto the car's uh, windshield glass. So the camera lens is pretty much just pointing directly outwards, really thin gap between the glass and the lens itself. The lens, by the way, can also be finely adjusted a little bit in terms of its angle, it can pivot a little bit as well. Taking a look at the companion application, it will basically now connect to the dash camera as the Wi-Fi and we can see a live feed of what the camera is looking at along the timestamp information. Otherwise, we can tap on stop to stop the recording. Right now it is continuously recording. It's been turned on for around three minutes or so and we can also see if it's recording to the SD card and whether the GPS signal has been locked. There are a few typos in terms of the spelling, so it's not perfect. Hopefully the application continues to be updated in the future. You can also change the video duration. Dash cams typically record shorter clips, which are typically one minute, three minutes, or five minutes long, and then starting a new clip just to save on memory, and it wipes over the older files first when the memory is full, but it keeps the important files, such as if you're in a car accident, uh, because of the accelerometer, it will detect motion. The GPS can also be used to track your speed, so how quickly you're moving in the car, uh, kilometers per hour, miles per hour, 
or you can also do things like uh, show you alerts if for example you are traveling too quickly if you're getting too close to the car in front of you and also when you're changing lanes just like the gps functionality on the 70 mive i can tap on archive then to take a look at the clips i've recorded so they are saved in a standard mp4 format and it takes about 85 megabytes or so you can download it directly from the camera into your phone or tablet's memory or i can tap on the playback to view back the clip, but because it's using Wi-Fi, it can still be a little slow for the full clip to be transferred over. So you can see right now we are at 17%, so it's going to take a minute or two before the video plays back. We finished uh, rendering back the clip that we tapped on previously, so it's playing back, and this is a one-minute clip, again taking up about 85 megabytes of space. Now the dash camera here does also have a built-in microphone. So as you can hear there, it does also pick up your voice as you're talking. Uh, you can turn this off in the settings as well. So it does record conversations uh, inside of the car as well. All right, so let's have a more detailed view of some of the real world performance. I'm gonna show a full screen video clip, just uh, giving you guys an idea of what the quality is like. From that demo, I would say the quality overall is quite good, especially in broad daylight. Again, the camera is really easy to adjust in terms of its field of view because of the pivot hinge. You can just rotate this little dial and uh, as a result change the position of the camera up and down. It does seem clear enough to give you things like license plate information and the colors themselves are preserved pretty well, giving you sufficient details, I would say. It's relatively smooth at 30 frames per second, and especially in good lighting environments, I would say it works really well. Now in the dark, one thing I will say is it doesn't have a built-in IR bulb. So it's using software to try and illuminate subjects a little bit more clearly as opposed to using a IR-based uh, technology. So you can see that lettering and details are still captured fairly well. Um, so even in the dark, it can capture some details if you have a bit of street lamp available in your surroundings as you are driving. If it is completely dark, um, it's still not going to work you know, super well just because, again, there is no IR bulb. That's more or less it for our hands-on review of the Akinori Dashcam Angel. Overall performance is really solid for the relatively low price, and again, it does indeed work when it comes to reducing glare, especially if you are in a really bright and extremely sunny environment. It is using a pretty typical LiPo rechargeable battery when it comes to the backup pack. It does need to be plugged in at all times when you want to record video. Um, this battery cell itself is not using one of the slightly newer capacitor technologies, making the cameras perform more stable and also making it more durable for long-term usage. Uh, that's one thing where a slightly older lithium-ion battery that we have here uh, does not have. But again, for only $70, it definitely is still one of the better budget dashboard cams on the market. If you're okay with the Full HD resolution, again, it performs well, has an easy-to-use application, and again, a very original Original design. You can check out more details if you're looking for a dashboard cam in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Akinori Dashcam Angel.